Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. I am Pastor Meyer Stahl, the pastor of the Southern New Mexico Church of God here in Las Cruces. And welcome to the program. Today's topic, Would Jesus Christ Celebrate Christmas, Part 2. If you missed Part 1 last week, you can send away for a free DVD or a CD of this program. It's free. It costs nothing. We never ask the public for money, so you are welcome to catch up. Now, we have two important booklets that we want to share with you this week, and they are also free. The first is The Plain Truth About Christmas. Now, at the bottom of that booklet, it says, where did we get Christmas? Where did Christmas come from? Did it come from the Bible or paganism? Here are astonishing facts which may shock you. Do you know the origin of the Christmas tree, of Santa Claus, of the mistletoe, the holly wreath, the custom of exchanging gifts? Do you know where that all come from, comes from? All you need to do is call us at the at 575-650-7359. Now, we will announce it further in the program, our phone number. So get a pen. Why don't you get a pen and a paper and write down now. Uh, write it down now. The second booklet is God's Holy Days. Did you know that God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation? These holy days are found in the Old Testament, but they take us to the New Testament. Man has substituted his holidays, Christmas, Easter, New Year's Day, and many more for God's holy days. Because of this, man has lost sight of God's wonderful plan of salvation and man's true destiny. So again, please call the number 575 area code 650-7359. And we're gonna, going to get now into the program. We have a Bible study that, just wanna make this announcement. We have a Bible study in El Paso. We, we need to start and we need 10 people is, are needed to start. We have about five now who are willing to come to El Paso to attend the Bible study. And most of these, all of these people live in El Paso. It's free. All you need to do is just bring your Bible, a notebook, a pen, and bring your questions. This is an interactive Bible study. It's a Bible study that you could take part in. So you could ask any question that you like. It doesn't have to be according to the subject that we are studying. Now, maybe you've been reading the Bible for even many years, and you say, I am, I am tired of reading the Bible. It's, I don't, still don't understand it. And because you're reading it, that's why we will show you how to study your Bible, not to just read it, but how to study it. It's a two different things. So if you want to join us, please call the number 575 area code 650-7359. And we'll be glad to tell you the location and the times and everything else. Okay, let's get on with the program. 
Uh, let's turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 10. Now, while you're turning in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 10, I want to tell you a little story. Suppose a friend of yours came to you and said, listen, I would like to plan your birthday party. And you said, well, okay. Uh, well, I was born, and I said, no, don't, don't tell me when you were born. That's not important right now. Uh, that's not an important detail. Uh, I want to get all of the things lined up. I want to send out the invitations. I want to uh, uh, really give you a tremendous birthday party, and it's on me. Uh, and you said, well, okay, fine, let's do it. And uh, this person had selected a date for your birthday party. It was months away from your actual day of birth. How would you feel about that? And it wasn't in, even in the same season as you were born. How would you feel about that? And suppose he got sent out the guest list and all the guests appeared and they all appeared with presents for you. But unfortunately, you weren't advised about when the birthday party would take place. You weren't notified. So the birthday party is taking place without you. Now, this is strange, isn't it? It's really strange. Okay, so now, you didn't show up. And now what do we do with all these presents? Well, let's exchange them with the guests. The guests will exchange presents with other guests who bought presents, and you don't get any presents because you're not there. That is all sounds crazy. But that's exactly what had happened. You weren't invited to your own party, your own birthday party. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th, and we're going to prove that very soon. And, uh, and let me ask you another thing. What does Christmas trees a uh, holly, Christmas wreaths, yuletide things, uh, mistletoe, uh, Santa Claus and his sleigh and his reindeers and uh, going down the chimney. And what does that all have to do with the birthday of Jesus Christ? What does that all have to do? Nothing, right? Well, this is very strange. This is a strange thing that has happened that people just take for granted. Why do you celebrate Christmas? Well, my parents celebrated Christmas. My grandparents, as far as I know, it goes all the way back. And uh, our family has always celebrated Christmas. Well, why? Why do you do it? And you say, well, I do it because it's a custom. It's our custom to celebrate Christmas. Aren't we celebrating Jesus' birthday? And the answer is no, we're not. All right, let's look at some of the customs that take place on Christmas. Let's turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 1. We'll start in verse 2. Okay, here we are. Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for nothing. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. 
They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. They have to be carried because they cannot go. They can't walk. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Now, let, we're going to explain these verses now. So, let's understand them. First of all, Jeremiah lived about 600 years before Jesus Christ. So, we're going back some 26 hundred years back in history to Jeremiah. And he's telling the people uh, not to, not, he's telling the people that these are heathen customs, that these are pagan customs. Uh, cutting a tree out of the forest, decking it with silver and gold, uh, and, and fasten it to an, a stand, that, what does that have to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? Absolutely nothing. What does Santa Claus and his sleigh and his reindeer, what does that have to do with Jesus Christ? Nothing. And what does mistletoe and uh, holly wreaths and, and all these Christmas wreaths, what does that all have to do? Yule logs, what does that have to do with the birth of Jesus Christ, nothing. Now, I don't want to offend anybody. There are some beautiful things about Christmas. The sights and the smells and the music is incredible. It is absolutely beautiful. You go into a store and there's a certain spirit in, that, in the stores and you hear the music and you start humming along with the music and you walk out of the store with your purchases and you're humming or singing the music and it, it is beautiful, there's no question about it. But let's look at the other side. If Jesus Christ wasn't born on December 25th, when was he born? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible tells us the day of his death. Tells us the month he died. It tells us the day that he died in that month. We know the year that he died. And we know the exact hour that he died. Now, why couldn't God have given us more information about his birth if God wanted us to celebrate his birth. Wouldn't God give some sort of hints, at least, when he was born? Well, let's turn in the Bibles to two very uh, familiar accounts of Jesus' birth. We're going to go to uh, Luke chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 1. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. So this is sort of a dated time. And all went out to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. So Joseph was born in Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. And we'll, we're, going to, we're going to stop there for a moment. And we're going to have to understand something. 
These people went out to be taxed. <clears throat> now, the weather had to be nice. You can't, you can't have a rainy season, a cold and rainy season, and expect people to come out. They, don't forget, there was no cars, there was no buses, no trains, no planes. Every, everywhere people went, they walked. So this was not done in the winter time. The winter time uh, that we, had, we would see in the Bethlehem would be about the same as the winter here in Las Cruces, except in Bethlehem, the season would be full of rain from the Feast of Tabernacles, which took place in early October or late September. After that, Feast of Tabernacles would have been the perfect time for people to leave and, and make the trip before the rains came. Now, we have some more important facts to explain you. We're going to take a short break. Please don't go away. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Hi, Las Cruces. Just hanging out by the pool. Do you want to promote your business or event? Well, check out our website and watch your profits go up. Tacos El Borrego de Oro in Las Cruces. We are celebrating $1 Taco Tuesdays. Come enjoy authentic Mexican food for the whole family. Bring the family to Tacos El Borrego for $1 Taco Tuesday and Plaza Thursday. Hi, I'm Ray Bamberg. With Here on Earth, I would like to invite you for a free hearing evaluation to our office. We've been here in southern New Mexico for 34 years helping people hear better. Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, our subject is would Jesus Christ keep Christmas? Well, would Jesus Christ celebrate Christmas? Now, this is part two. In case you weren't, in case you weren't watching last week, we did part one. We would be very happy to send you a CD or a DVD for free, no cost. No obligation. We never ask the public for money. All you need to do is call area code 575-650-7359. And we'll be happy to send you. We have two important booklets, uh, The Plain Truth About Christmas and also God's Holy Days that we'll, we'd be happy to send along to anyone who would like to read them. They're free, they're easy to read, take you about 15 minutes to read each booklet, and they're factual, read it along with your Bible. You should also, you should always prove all things by your Bible. Well, let's get back into the scripture. We're in Luke chapter two, 
and we're picking it up at verse 5. And here it says, uh, they went to Bethlehem to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. She was ready to be delivered. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger uh, because there was no room for them in the inn. I'd like you to note that. There was no room for them in the inn. So they had to go to where the animals were and that was the only place that was available. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Now we're going to stop here for a moment. I want to explain something here. Now, the shepherds were abiding, were sleeping with their flocks up by night, all, the, all night long. They were sleeping out in the field. The weather had to be nice weather to be outside. So it was in the early fall when they were, when the weather wasn't hot, it was a little cooler, but it was, it was nice, nice weather. And they had to bring their flocks in. This is well known by all of the people who study the Bible. They had to bring their flocks in by late September or at the very latest, early October. Jesus Christ could have never been born on December 25th. Now let's go back to the Bible. <clears throat> and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day. What day? It doesn't say what day. It get, doesn't give a date. It doesn't give a date. In the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So they would, they would, it would be lying in a manger. Let's turn back to Matthew chapter 2. We're going back to Matthew chapter 2. And we'll, uh, we're going to see Matthew's account of what he says. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men. It doesn't say three. It, it just says wise men. It doesn't say how many. From the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard, had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least of the princesses of Judah, for out of you shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. This would be the king of Israel. When Herod, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He wanted to date the birth of Jesus Christ. He wanted to make sure. And he sent them to Bethlehem 
and said, go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Baloney. He wasn't going to worship him. He was going to kill him. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till they came, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when they were come into the house, we're going to hold it right here. Hold it right here. I'm going to explain this. He's now in a house. He's no longer in a manger. And let's, let's pick it up again. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child, no more a baby, but he's a toddler at this point, at least a toddler, with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream, they should not return to Herod. They departed to their own country another way. And, uh, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take you the young child and, the mo and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and you be there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. We're stopping there. Now, he demanded that all the children under two years, two years or younger, should be killed. So it wasn't a babe. They, when the wise men came, they didn't find the babe lying in the manger. By that time, he was in the house. There's a lot of things that need to be corrected. Why don't you, why don't you uh, call us and ask for the plain truth about Christmas? and the booklet also about God's holy days. And God has holy days that reveal his plan of salvation. Now, we have an interactive Bible study in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and you are all welcome. Uh, we have it at 1701 East Missouri in Las Cruces. Uh, bring your Bible, bring a notebook, bring a pen, and bring all your questions. We, we love questions. Interactive means you take place, you take part. It's a Bible study. It's not reading the Bible. We study the Bible. It's a whole different thing than reading the Bible. So we study it, and we'll teach you how to study your own Bible. That's all the time we have today, folks. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575 650 7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.